So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hand over to Shelly to say something short. What? <laughs> but I'm going to give you a ball. Because you, you're playing into what I'm playing with tonight. Do you, do you see this little ball here? We're going to have... I'm going to give you a red ball. Okay, so when you're finished, someone else must come take the ball from, from Shelly and come and share as well. And I think it's Sandy. <laughs> it could be Kevin. I don't know. It could be Manny. It's me. It's me. It's me. It's me. It's me. It's me. Amen. <laughs> you want the mic? I don't need them. Um, I didn't plan for this. When you were praying here during the worship as it was ending, you, spoke, you were speaking about the Lord has called us from our mother's womb, even before our mother's womb. And I really, really uh, earnestly feel that the Lord wants to impart that to somebody tonight. Yes. They're questioning, why me, Lord? Why am I so special? What did I do to be brought here to this place and to this point in my life? And I literally saw this massive finger coming down and it's like doing this. I've called you. Before your parents were even created, I called you for a specific purpose. Don't think that where you are and physically and where you are spiritually is by accident or by your choice. It's not by your choice. Nothing God does in our lives is by our choice. Whether we think, oh, I've got such a need uh, 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 to be um, in right with God, that's not your choice. That's God's choice. God has planted that in your heart to make you come to a decision, to make you come and draw you to a place. You're not here by accident. You are not here by accident. Your husband is not here by accident. Your husband is not where he is today because of a choice he made. God called him, and God called you both for a purpose, for a specific purpose. And he will in time reveal it to you and your husband, what it is that he requires of you both. Don't think that what your husband is experiencing now is because he needed the Lord. Yes, he needed the Lord. Exactly. God needed him too for a purpose. And you are strategically placed. I like that word. <laughs> strategically placed because God has always got a strategy to everything he does. You are placed with your husband for a purpose. Don't think you fell in love many, many years ago just because he looked cute. No. You are with him because God has purposefully planted you with your husband. Just push the door. Okay, before you go, just hold on to your red ball. You must give. Sandy's going to have a yellow ball. Okay. You're going to stay next to Sandy, that side. Here we go. Yeah, he's busy. <laughs> oh, I don't need this. Do I? I don't. No. It's for the media, sorry, sorry. Okay. Uh, uh. <laughs> yeah, what, not watching. Um, I just want to challenge everybody sitting here tonight. Um, after Julius prayed for me two weeks ago, um, well, you know, I am over the top, but it kind of pushed me further. But there's something that's been a mulling over. And God wants to challenge every single person sitting here. Are you growing or are you standing? Because if you're standing, you are actually dying spiritually. There has to be change. There has to be growth. You have to be stretched. If you're not being stretched, then you're dying spiritually. I mean, I've been walking with the Lord many, many years. Grew up in a Christian home. 
But there's always that desire and passion in my life to experience more mm. of what God is doing. Because, you know, I was actually thinking about it this evening. If you, if you think about it, Jesus actually said, you will do far greater things than I have done. He healed the sick. He... So, so what's happening? Why aren't we doing it? It's because our mindsets are saying, I'm okay. I come to church. I'm saved. I'm going to heaven. But you don't live an exciting Christian life. You plod along. And please, I never want to plod. Never. I don't think I ever will. Anyway, let me share on what happened, this, because I think that's why Julius called me up there. When God, when he prayed for me, God said to me, you've got to impart. Because if you don't impart what he's given you, it's going to die. As you give out, so you get more. Oh, man. What an exciting... We had a revival in the corner. Well, we always do, but this, this morning's was even greater. Um, we, actually, we don't need a... Um, what do you call this? Um, icebreakers. No. We don't have icebreakers in our ladies' <laughs> group. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, it, it was so powerful to see the hunger and the thirsting. The woman was so ready and open. We had two ladies sharing that have actually never ministered before. Mariette. It's Women's Month. They all had to bring, and of course she's the naughty one. Of course she spoke about Jezebel. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Um, I'm just think, I, I just want to encourage everybody tonight that um, don't don't be satisfied, don't settle. Um, be ready for what God wants you to do, and it may be weird things. I've just read. You see, it's dangerous. This. I've just read the revival in the Philippines. Yeah. I mean, they walked on water, you know. The water was turned into wine, you know. <laughs> anyway, bless you. Um, Liz was touched by God. Oof, down she went. And she said she felt the peace from her head going right through her body like this. That's God. Amen. Receive. There we go. <laughs> Shelly's receiving. You want the wine? What? <laughs> Who's coming for the green ball? I've called up two people. I can call more people. I know who needs to come up. Come, Kev. Stop making excuses. God's got you where he wants you to be. He's not waiting for your future for you to be able to touch those around you. So often we wait for the big breakthrough or the calling to ministry or the pulpit to actually do something for Jesus. But every place that you go, you are the Bible to those around you. Amen. And there's someone here tonight specifically that needs to know that they are a daughter of God. Yeah. Stop holding on to your past. Yeah. There's nothing that can separate you from God. Yeah. Nothing. So stop thinking you're not good enough. And that's for everyone. Stop thinking you're not good enough to do what God's got for you. Yeah. So often we eliminate ourselves before we even get started. 
So be encouraged tonight. Remember, God knew you were going to be here tonight. God knew where you were going to work. God knew where you were going to walk. So stop doubting. Just think about this. With God, everything is possible. That we're too scared to start anything. I believe God's spoken to someone specifically to start something. And you've just been putting it on a back burner. It's for about two years already. It's a long time. Time is coming. You need to touch those people God's placed on your heart. Mm-hmm. Auntie Sandy, it's going to tie to you as well. Mm-hmm. Specifically, that I'm feeling it's tying to you. Yes. So whoever God spoke to, come speak to Auntie Sandy afterwards. She'll give you the wisdom that you need. Yellow. This one's got a bite in it. This must be one of the kids that were hungry in kids' church. Decided this is an apple. <laughs> Was it Jeremy? <laughs> no, no, definitely not. He's coming for the yellow ball. <laughs> Don't you know Clint? Clint Gianni is from the Roman Empire. Yes, I'm Italian. He's Italian. Here's the yellow ball, the bitten one. Lovely. Always broken. <laughs> um, funny that he took the bitten one. I, I know his story. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, sure. Hello. Good, good evening. Um, yeah, I've been close to God. I've been tight with God. I've been through the experiences of God, and I ran away from Him for, for many, many years. Um, I came to church on Sunday, and Pastor Jesus told me to, in his sermon, to run back to him because I thought I could sort all my issues out by myself, which is not good. I'm very, very happy tonight. I'm very proud tonight. My eldest daughter, Shukara, right over there, 22 years old, has come to the house of God because last week, Wednesday, the enemy came and distracted, and that's what he does. So I'm very, very happy and I'm very proud um, that she's here tonight so she can learn that God loves her. Right? God loved me. When I was a useless addict, addicted to alcohol, I, I had no understanding about grace. I went to rehab and I found about grace, the bridge that Jesus built between him and God called grace. forgives you for your sins that you're going to sin next. That's what saved my life in rehab. And... Um, Today I'm great, I'm strong, but like you said, you need to stick with God every day. You can't give up on him. You can't just say, like, tomorrow's another day, another day, another day. So uh, before I go, I just want to share something with you guys. Um, I met a guy in Cape Town in the rehab that he was in. I wasn't in rehab at the time, but um, he had, his parents had one of the largest locksmith companies in Cape Town. And um, what happened with him is he fell out with the father and he landed up on the street and he bought his last piece of rope to hang himself because he was a drug addict on heroin. I thought I had to share this with you tonight. He took the rope, hung it on the tree where he was living below, and that was him. He woke up in a black casket, kicking on the door, going, what's going on? kicked on the door, opened up the door, and as he opened the door, he saw the light of the, of the door, and in walked a nurse in the mortuary. God brought him back from the dead. That's how powerful this story is. And today, he's one of the greatest ministers in Cape Town you'll ever meet. His name is Carl. He's got his family back. He's got everywhere. God brought him back from the dead to tell all of us here in this room tonight that he is the most powerful that you will ever meet and ever know and ever understand. Keep on praying. Keep it real. Amen. <laughs> Keep the ball. <laughs> Clint, before you go, anyway, Clint, um, the word Kevin had and the word that we, we shared tonight was also for you and, and, your, and your daughter, Kiara, is uh, that restoration is that God has an identity for you because it's in him. 
And nothing's impossible, even though there's obstacles in families, right? There's obstacles in families. I have obstacles in my family. <laughs> Look at them, my kids, you know. <laughs> but we've had obstacles in growing up. We've had obstacles in our, with our parents, with our grandparents. Our parents had obstacles. There'll always be obstacles in families. But nothing is impossible to overcome. Kiara? Nothing. Shikara, sorry. Shikara. There, I got it right. Thank you. Thank you for correcting me, Father. Shikara, sorry for messing up your name. But God has, got, God has really got you. And when Kevin said that I knew it was for you, that one about identity, finding God, knowing your Father. Not this Father. This Father is imperfect, and you know that. Isn't it true? <laughs> Shikara, he's not perfect, but our Father in heaven's perfect. And you know what? His love perfects everything in us doesn't matter what we look like right now or what we sound like or what we're doing in our life. When God comes into your life by the Spirit of God, he begins, to, he begins to pull out the things that are not of Him and He begins to pour in the things that are of Him. And the first thing that God pours into your heart is love and acceptance. And He pours that in to say that you have a plan in life, but God's plan is greater. And God wants to put that plan into life. And nothing's impossible for God. Things might look a bit difficult right now, but nothing is impossible for our Father in heaven. And He loves you just the way you are. And you know what? Listen to Dad next to me. Exactly, that's what I've been saying. <laughs> but God knows, even with Clint. He needs a lot of grace. That's why He got that word grace at uh, rehab. Amen. So the same with all of us. We all need grace from God. We all need God's acceptance. We need to know that He's there as our Father. And you know what? We, we, we can't work our way. To that place, we just have to have faith in to know that Jesus has paid the price for us. When we do that, we turn away from the, from the things we are doing right now. We turn towards God. He begins to heal us. Of all the stuff, you know, there's a lot of stuff that happened in our life. A lot of disappointments. A lot of stuff disappoint us in life. And the things that disappoint us is the things that often drive us away from God. And that's what the devil wants is for the disappointments to be greater than the, than the love that God can give you and the acceptance that God can give you. I'm not saying this just willy-nilly. I'm saying this because God loves you, and I believe with all my heart that He will restore your life in every area. Just give Him a chance, and He will. Okay. Do you mind? I'm not going to call you up. You can sit where you are. I know we're not yet to embarrass you at all. Your dad's got the ball in his hand. The ball's in his court. It's quite prophetic, by the way. Dad, to pull yourself towards yourself. Do you know what that means? Amen. But uh, God is good. Who's, who's picking up this ball here? Jude. The basketball is yours. Come on, Jude's a basketball player. Yeah, look at him. Shorter than me, but he can play, you know? <laughs> Hectic. Um, <laughs> you? I was expecting this actually. I was expecting it, yeah. Same spiritual realm. Um, yeah, so this past, well, what, three weeks ago? Yeah, my family had like a spiritual attack. So, like, my dad was getting attacked at work. Uh, my brother at his work, and then me also with basketball. Because, mm -hmm. yeah, it was just like one of, like we never expected it as a family. But through God's grace, he brought us through it. And it's so profound that what everyone is saying, how strong God is, how we must keep our faith in Christ. Because if it wasn't for God, I don't know where we would have been today. So, yeah, that's, that's basically it. And, I, and that's all I can say because I'm still, um, it's, like, it's my father at the end of the day protecting my family. My, like my heavenly father that's watching over us. And it's so evident in our everyday life because he's waking us up each day with new breath in our lungs. And there's still a plan and a purpose for us waking up. So, yeah. That's it. Awesome. Basketball. 
<laughs> There's one little tennis ball left here. It's a yellow tennis ball. Who's fetching it? Last person. There's something happening in the spirit tonight, if you don't notice. There's impartation happening. There's ministry happening from each person's testimony of what God's busy doing in their life. Um. <laughs> Anybody want to fetch the yellow ball? Anybody? Many? Emmanuel? <laughs> sure, you knew it. Sure. It's quite a high day. from God, buddy. Yeah. Not at all, eh? Not at all. Um, so today, I was sharing with Pastor Julius um, what happened after school. So, um, myself and Alan, but Mr. Naidu, um, we came from uh, Romans to get a pizza for our ears because it was their last day today. And uh, there was this group um, that came to the school. It's all like the speakers and all those kind of things, but uh, I knew there was this group coming, but I thought it was going to be the following day, <laughs> tomorrow, but they came today. Anyway, um, so this group that came here, they were doing street ministry at the school. Um, so they were busy setting up and things. Um, went inside, still had a, had a bit of the pizza, and I thought, okay, fine, after the two pizzas, I'm going to go check what's happening outside. Um, went outside, and I just felt this excitement. Um, so... In the past, I was very much involved in street ministry. Mm. <laughs> well, and God can convict a person, like seriously. But he, can also, like, he just reminds you, yeah, you used to be there. Anyway, um, and to see how these kids got so excited, not knowing what's going to happen, not knowing. And remember, this is now after school, half past two. They need to go home and all of that. So the crowd started, the, the, the kids came, and it was just like a lot. And um, as time went by, then things got a bit serious. So obviously it's, it's the youth, they need to do icebreakers, get them there, and all of those kind of things. Long story short, it came to, to the point where the, um, one of the members started, wanted to do the sinner's prayer. Now, at Willow, we got a mul mul multiple cultural uh, school. So there's Muslims, there's Khazars, there's Christians, you, there's yeah. So amongst the leftover, the the, the, the left uh, learners that were still there, um, I told Pastor Julius about fifty of them, and fifty of them gave their hearts to the Lord. <laughs> fifty of them gave their hearts to the Lord. And it got me emotional because, again, I got convicted because literally God told me, you know what, why must I bring people from overseas? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, literally. And, and I was like, yo. And then obviously coming, coming to band practice, I got so excited. I'm like, Pastor Julius, I need to tell you this. And then obviously he knew. Like, yeah. like finishing my sentences, you know. But... Um, <laughs> Basically, it's, 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 it's my calling, it's our calling to do ministry. And I was, I was, I was speaking to one of the kids, and this, this, this child was saying, but, but sir, we are only supposed to be praying on a Sunday. I said, no. No. We, and God doesn't limit us just by a building. Now, we as believers, we need to start stepping up. Where's given now? <laughs> stepping up and start, you know, praying. Just by having a normal conversation, do you know that Jesus loves you? A simple thing. I'm just as guilty 
you know, how many people has gone past me and, and I get convicted by the Holy Spirit, pray for that person. We don't know what that person's going through. Love one another. We're forgetting about those kind of things. So that was just a, and I've been constantly getting reminders, and that just hit me, <laughs> what happened at the school, seeing that 50 souls got saved. And here am I, where I can't even pray for one person. <laughs> but again, that, that, that gave me um, the motivation, to, you know what? I need to really step up. I need to step up. And you need to ask yourself that question, when are you going to start stepping up? God gives us the platform. We are guided by the Holy Spirit as well. So we just need to listen. Remember, God is he's a gentleman. He's not going to force his way. He's not going to force his way. But he's going to hold time like, you know, hello, come on. <laughs> like, I, like I felt I, I felt the fire burning under my mom. <laughs> Some people need the fire. Others just need a tap. Praise God. So what's happening tonight in the spirit, and um, this is my prayer, that this will begin to happen on a Wednesday night where there's impartation, where there's the gifts of the Spirit operating, because each one here has got different gifts. Corinthians 12 says to us that it's the same Spirit, but different ministrations of the Spirit, different gifts of the Spirit that's given to each one. Some have wisdom, some have knowledge. Tongues, interpretation of tongues. Gift of faith is even a, is a gift in the Bible, and some of us need that gift of faith sometimes to operate in difficult times, and it's a supernatural faith that comes upon you. Prophecy, these people are prophesying here, they don't even know it. Prophesying over people's lives, prophesying when, you, when the Spirit of the Lord moves. There's miracles, extraordinary miracles that's about to happen on these nights. There's also gifts of healings, amen, gifts of healing different gifts of healing. In other words, even in Azusa Street Revival, we saw that some people were specializing in different gifts. Some specialized in deaf ears, others specialized in blind eyes, others specialized in crippled legs, others specialized in broken heads, whatever. Whatever needs to be healed, the Holy Spirit knows. So I, I prepared a whole sermon for tonight, but it's not necessary for me to preach it. We'll preach it on Sunday. Faith bites. Faith bites. And um, go read that scripture. I want to just remind you to read that scripture. So you know I don't suck things out of my thumb here. Yeah. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 4 speaks about the, that faith helps others. And uh, faith protects, faith saves, and faith leads us to perfection. Those are the points we're going to talk about on Sunday. And it's going to be exciting because Sunday we're going to see an overflow of what's happening on a Wednesday. So each one that's sitting here. It's not because the people that took the ball is more special than you. If that was the case, God uses anybody that's available. It's just faith. It's, it's nothing, you know, it's sometimes you feel like you should say something. I don't think anyone's standing here because they felt they should say something. Some of them came up because I said they must come up. But, eh? but Clint always has something to say. You know? So, um, anyway. You know, the thing is, God is calling people to operate in the church. And you know those gifts in, in, in Corinthians 12, the 1 Corinthians 12, the gifts are to help one another. It's for the common good. It's me to help you, you to help me, you to help her, her to help you. So it goes on. If the church begins to operate in the gifts, man, what an army. <laughs> there's no stopping. The devil's going to start shaking tonight already because he knows that there's something happening on the corner of Branton Della Ray Street in West Stream at the Open Door West Point Church. And he's saying, whoa, 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 whoa. We've got to stop something here. So don't, don't be afraid when the devil comes against you because the devil can only do what he's allowed to do. And he's allowed to test and he's allowed to tempt. But you're also allowed to say no. Clint? You're also allowed to say no. And you know, since say yes to the devil when he comes knocking at your door. You say no to him. That's when temptation comes. And the, and the way that we deal with temptation, Matthew chapter 4, if you want to write this down for those that are making notes, I see some people make notes. Go follow what Jesus did. He just told the devil every time what's written in the Bible. 
this is written. And then the devil comes with the scripture, and then he says, but this is also written like this. The devil's clever. He can even quote scripture to you. Do you know the devil can quote scripture? It's not just preachers that quote the scripture. Even the devil can quote scriptures. He knows God better than you. Come on. He does. He comes from heaven. He was banished because he wanted to be greater than God. Pride got him kicked out of heaven. And you and I, when he comes against you, you can say it is written, it is written, it is written. And when he sees that the door is completely shut, because three times that Jesus had to deal with the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. He had to deal with three areas of life. And so all of us are tested in these areas, all of us standing here. <clears throat> what I love about God is that he used imperfect vessels. He doesn't call you because you're qualified. He qualifies the called. He puts something in you. His spirit, which makes you qualified, which perfects you, which gives you the words and the wisdom and the insight and all of that. Amen.